a Burroughs and Badgers battle report with Smiley51. So first of all, we had uh, Pussy Galore with her caliber and her Elizabethan ball gown. Uh, over there we've got Olaf the Otter, who's got a, an injured left arm, which means he can only wield that saber. And we'll have to get him the pistol at some point. Monty the Marmot. Puggy the medium-sized hound. Basher the beaver. And Flopsy the rabbit with her slightly twitchy and nervous disposition. And then the sage Alec Guinness, leader of the, the crowd. Badger, uh, sorry, Basil Shadowcaster the Badger and his genuine smoke-filled pipe over there. We rolled for the scenario uh, surprise attack, whereby uh, the tougher crew um, place whichever of their characters they rolled uh, of, of four or more to come onto the table and they can place them I think anywhere they want and poor my poor opponent who we shall call R um, managed to roll ones for everyone except for one dudette who you can see over there and who he placed in the middle and basically the scenario is that if um, it's a surprise attack on, on, on that poor tougher crew Though I have no sympathy because this one has been leading the campaign and murdering everyone left, right and centre so they get their comeuppance and they deserved it. But anyway, they, uh, so he had to put down one character. I would put the character in retrospect down in the middle and the first thing I would have done would have been to run because when all your characters are gone, you've lost. Um, and so with that character slightly towards one of the corners, I placed all my sniper types over here with the Bash of the Beaver just to kind of finish off the job. And if they didn't do it, well, I placed the rest of the crew over here, ready to swing in. So instead of just running, the first thing uh, that the dudette, the Lady Otter did, was to hide. Uh, not going into that uh, hut, but just hiding outside it, just touching the terrain there. And so, uh, these guys try to spot her, which uh, one of them didn't. One of them did, and then took a pot shot, didn't cause that much damage. Um, but they were basically rendered useless by all this trying to find uh, the hiding otter. But then, as I'd hoped, uh, this lot over here, these four guys came running in and virtually murdered the poor otter, leaving only a couple of wounds. The poor thing just just bleeding. As I said, I would have just run. Um, and that was the end of the first turn. Now, in all fairness, we were uh, mostly just trying to remember the rules after a year of lockdown. Um, and what a lovely rule set they are. Um, and when it came to turn two, poor R, my lovely and noble opponent, again managed to roll a, a load of everything except for fours, except for this uh, magician otter. It's it's an all as a single species uh, crew, which because he's a bit of a power, an evil power gamer, he thought would give him a few advantages, and it did up front. But now, as you, you know, you can see he hasn't got people of differing skill sets. They're all just otters. So this magician otter, well, he decided that the right thing to do was to run the otter in and try and save. Uh, well, as you can see, the uh, the other otter who who didn't quite make it in turn two. Now, in retrospect, what I might have done is thought, do you know what? If the objective is just to have people on the table and the rest on coming on, I will bring someone else on from another table edge and just hang until more mates have turned up on the scene. And then when we're in strength, then we go in. But at the time we were busy just looking through the rules, a bit dazed and eating crisps. Um, and so he foolishly perhaps charged in the otter um, the otter obviously wasn't able to save the other otter who got his head bashed in by uh, a giant badger. Um, and then um, it, it, it just got outnumbered by the rest of my crew over here. And ultimately we took that one out too and the game was over. 
well, it didn't end well for one of the otters. Um, and this is the closest thing I could find to a gravestone for a pet. Uh, you know, that is the underlying comedy value of burrows and badgers. Yes, but the R had such a huge penny stash, he just bought another otter. Although that one doesn't have quite all these skills upgrades. But then again, you know, he's such a good egg. He said, you know, look, this crew has been doing really well. You know, if this was some kind of narrative, ongoing kind of campaign thing, which in a way it is, well, you know, we did really well. Inevitably, people weren't going to like us, and we got ambushed, and we got ambushed bad, and we lost one of our own, and strangely, the replacement looks exactly the same, and one day, we'll be painted. And, of course, we'll play again. Here are some, apropos of nothing really, reinforcements, which, if I ever get enough cash to buy, I will I will use. Um, I was quite pleased with how this red kite turned out. There seemed to be quite a few flying around local area to give a bit of inspiration. Um, I used uh, some of the Games Workshop contrast paints on the white, which panned out very well, except I must say, using a white undercoat does mean that you end up with all these little bits when the paint dries that I probably will need to go back in and tidy up. Um, and then we also have a Kingfisher, which I really enjoy painting and looking uh, up different patterns for. Here's the uh, other side. And a few more reinforcements with a slightly Scottish tinge. I mean, painting extreme detail has never been a talent, but you know, there were some great tips on how to paint some very basic uh, tartan online. Look at that crazed pooch. Bit more tartan there. Uh, for a wildcat, these things are fearsome, which means no one particularly wishes to charge them. And uh, I was pleased to make some use of some old alternative armies miniatures I had from about more than 20 years ago. These were the Todoroni, some kind of, you know, probably wouldn't pass uh, political muster these days, but you know, these are the Todoroni, I think some Italian city-state uh, army of Italy types for uh, you know Napoleonic Wars, um, taking the mickey really there. And there's frog number one and frog number two, and we'll see how they pan out. Eventually, I think they fit in very nicely scale-wise. And there you have it. So uh, by all means, like and subscribe. And. Uh, I do loads of different bits and pieces of wargaming, I kind of skip between different things and so as I get more time I will put more stuff up and hopefully others can see what I'm doing because I know I really enjoy watching so many of the wargaming videos others have been putting out there, particularly over lockdown. Keep well and keep safe.